It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome, Welcome back. back to your feel-good breakfast show, <laughs> Espresso. And I'm, and you can see it's Monday because yeah. Rimo... Harry Shorts. Harry Shorts. And Shorts. It's summertime, man. But listen, it's relationship talk on Monday. And yeah. we're joined by our relationship expert, Dr. Eve. And today we're starting a, a special two week focus with her, looking at the ins and outs involved in coming out as homosexual to your friends and to your family and vice versa. Mm. Now, coming out is, of course, very important and a very stressful process. And uh, staying in the closet can be a burden that leads to mental health problems, dangerous behaviors, and sometimes even, sadly, suicide. That's Right. Well, joining us to unpack this complicated but very important topic uh, even more is uh, singer and songwriter and winner of The Voice, Craig Lucas, who recently touched many friends across South Africa and admirers by releasing a heartfelt letter explaining his decision to come out publicly. So if you are thinking of coming out to your loved ones, sit up, take note and call us on 21 Four three zero nine double eight one for us to engage with you and your questions or comments. We do understand that this is a loaded topic, mm -hmm. so you are more than welcome to call in anonymously if you wish. Yeah. Thanks for joining so, us, Craig, Dr. Yep. Eve. Good mm. to see you on a Monday morning. Let's first start off with you, Dr. Eve, and yeah. try and explain the, the difficulty and the complications uh, in coming out in the first place. What is it that might be going on psychologically in a person's mind, maybe in their hearts, that might make them feel, but I can't take this mm. step, which is very important. Well, Kat, there's such a terrible history, not only in this country, but in the world, of being other. Other means that you are not heterosexist, you're not heterosexual. You know, no one is brought up to be told as a child, well, you actually may one day fall in love with a man. Mm -hmm. No one tells you that. It's like just the automatic thing that you're going to fall in love with a girl and you're going to get married, you're going to have children. Mm -hmm. So there is this incredible secret that begins to develop inside of people. It's also just to put it into a greater context universally, that there are many countries, especially in Africa, where people who come out are criminalized. Mm, they're yeah. punished, they're killed, they're stoned, yeah. they're locked up. It's kind of biblical as well. So it is never an easy task to be able to come out and to acknowledge something where you are at such risk of discrimination, prejudice, and harm. And yet, on the other hand, and, and having read your letter, Craig, you, you certainly encapsulated that. Mm. If you don't come out, the harm to self yeah. and to the rest of the people in your world is equally terrible as well, mm. right? I mean, I'm sure that that is yeah. what your experience was. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. keeping it in is so self-destructive. Talking it out carries so much risk, yeah. mm. but eventually it brings a certain amount of relief. Absolutely, and, and yeah. for Craig, I mean, you're, you're right to say, Craig, I mean, what was your biggest fear mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, first having to come out to your loved ones and your friends and everyone around your personal sort of uh, space, um, and then coming out to everyone publicly, what was your biggest fear there? Yeah, there are a lot of factors. So one is, like Dr. Eve said, being othered. You didn't want anybody to treat you differently. Mm. I didn't want anybody to have pity for me. I didn't want my family to be weird. And then there's also my career. My mom, I messaged my mom before I did it because I told her prior to the letter and I mm. asked her, like, I asked for advice and she said, you're so new, like, what if this affects your career? You know, mm. and those are things you consider. Um, mm. And, mm. and the sad truth is that it could and it affected many other people's careers. It, it exists, discrimination exists, and mm. it's a risk you've got to take. Mm. Wow, man. And, and we are so glad that you did take that step, because I think in doing that, you unchange so many other yeah. people out there whose stories, mm. right. you know, kind of like live vicariously through you, through mm. your music. Yeah. Um, so it is, it, it's most inspirational in so many different ways. So we're going to keep our lines open, 0214309881. Mm. Are you thinking of coming out to your loved ones? Give us a call with your questions or your comments. Dr. Eve is here, Craig is here as well. Uh, and we look forward to engaging with you on this very loaded topic, as you said early on. Mm. So you are very welcome to call in anonymously if you wish, but we'll be right back. It's my feel good breakfast show. All right, we're back again with our relationship chat on this Monday morning. Dr. Eve, Craig Luke is joining us. Uh, earlier on, we referred to the fact that Craig did share a very heartfelt letter out to fans out there coming out publicly. And that's the topic of our discussion today, coming out to your friends, to your family, to your immediate community, the pressures that surround that. Yeah. And just a couple of seconds ago, we were talking to Craig about the moments that led up to him opening up publicly. Mm. We want to share those with you as well. So maybe if you, if you wouldn't yeah. mind, that weekend, what happened to make you say, I need to come out, yeah. this is it? Yeah. I think, just really slowly, I started becoming a really angry person. I started becoming mean because I'd now have to be somebody else when I was in public, right? I had to watch what I say and watch where I go and watch who I was with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I started drinking a lot. I started drinking every single day. And then I started fighting with my friends and my family. And they said, 
it happened slowly in the beginning, but then it started becoming a regular occurrence. Yeah. And mm. on that weekend, I was so, so mean to people I really loved, right? And I thought that they'd never speak to me again. And I was at home and I was so depressed. And I didn't, I didn't know what, what like, I didn't know why I was doing these things. Mm. And it was a Sunday morning, I was washing the dishes and I realized, and out of nowhere, I just burst out crying. And that's when I knew, like, this is what this is. Mm -hmm. This is, I, I, I might have even had known it before, but you sort of don't admit it to yourself either. Because if you admit reason. it to yourself, because then it's true, you know, yeah, then, yeah. then it becomes real. Because it's easy to go like, yeah, I'm drinking a lot because I'm gigging a lot, yeah. which means after gigs I drink, so mm -hmm. it's cool. And that's the but thing, I'd become a singer and I was like, this is what singers do. It's okay, yeah. we, you know, we can, we don't work all week, we can drink in the week. You yeah. start making up all these excuses. Yeah. And what you're, what you're talking about now speaks to the fact that mm -hmm. you have a lot of family and loved ones around you, right? Yeah. Who are exposed to this sort of behavior, yeah. who are then exposed to, you know, the drinking and the anger and yeah. all of that. What, what is it for the family, Dr. Eve? What, mm -hmm. what, what are some of the things that families go through when they have uh, someone in their family that needs to come out and is burning to come out? Or how can families assist in this process? Well, Sometimes families will say, I knew from when you were yeah. young that there was something different about you. I just didn't even know for myself what it really was mm. or I needed to consider what this would mean for me and mostly for my child, as mm. you alluded to earlier on when we were chatting, mm. the protection of the child. But there is another element which cannot be uh, dismissed is that families may feel enormously threatened by a child coming out, whether it's gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgendered, and literally kick these kids out of the house. And this is a very real situation. Yeah, that whole, I will that disown happens. you thing. Yeah. Yeah, it so happens. Yeah. You know, even though we live in a progressive society, yeah. and even though we have a constitution that says you cannot discriminate, yeah. Yeah. what happens in a very personal way feels a betrayal. Yeah, it is. A huge betrayal. I mean, your family, Craig. Yeah, my, m my mom was okay, my brother was okay, but they, so I lost my dad when I was three years old, right? Mm. And mm. There was this guy who was like my father for 15 years and mm. I came out and he doesn't speak to me. He can't be in the same room as me. If I walk in, he walks out. Mm. If All as a result. As of a result, yeah. yeah. And so mm. it happens. Mm. It's, I feel like it's probably even going to happen and it's sad to say, but it not is. everybody is going to accept right. you and it's, it's but, hard. But, but Craig, you yeah. weighing up those two. You weighing up the, yeah. the, the harm that it was doing to your mental health yeah. compared to some of the rejection yeah. that's going to be happening to some people mm. who you are going to lose in your life. Yeah. And mm. I'm very proud of you that you've Thank chosen you. You've chosen to actually yeah. say, I don't want to live with this pain yeah. Yeah. because there's nothing shameful about this. Mm. I don't and even think I chose people... it. It just mm. got so bad that exactly. it was like, either yeah. I do this or I die. Right. And, and that's the thing. Yeah. 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 I was about to say, it's either that or you you take your own life or do something mm. harmful yeah. to yourself yeah. and to those yeah. around you. Okay, yeah. let's keep those lines open. 021-430-9881. We'll be back again. Very, very interesting and very loaded topic. So as I said earlier on, you can call in anonymously. We want you to share your stories and perhaps uh, be enlightened by what's going on mm. here. Yeah, on the couch. We'll see you after a short break. It's my feel good breakfast show. Oh man, uh, yeah. welcome back to your feel good breakfast show. Monday morning relationship <laughs> chat. Dr. Eve, Craig mm. Lucas on the couch. We're talking about coming out mm. to your friends, to your family, to your community, how to manage that process. And we've also opened up our line mm. 021 Yeah, that's right. Now, Dr. Eve, I mean, we were chatting mm. now and the one thing that's sort of, you know, coming across is that everyone's situation is different. So yeah. uh, Craig's coming out would be different to somebody else's coming out, for example. Mm -hmm. But what else, is there a sort of a, a general guideline to how to do it, how exactly. to come out and break it down exactly. to your family? Definitely, there is a general guideline. So the first thing, as I said, there are three different processes. <clears throat> Excuse me, the first one is coming out to self. And as I'm hearing, even with you, Craig, it takes a long time, can take years, yeah. take knowledge to self that this is who I am yeah. because nobody wants to be different in society, mm. right? Yeah. yeah, that was the hardest one for me. Was, exactly, yeah, I didn't for really, most people. I wasn't too bothered with what other people would say, but it right. was me accepting myself for myself. Exactly, yeah. to yeah. actually acknowledge that yeah. I'm still a male, I'm still yeah. masculine, and I'm still a sexual person, I still have rights, but this is who I love and who I'm attracted to. I just happen mm. to be the same sex person. So that can take a long time, that process. And then coming out to other people, you really, really need to be mindful of who you come out to, mm. how you come out to, when you come out to them, yeah. and where you come out to them. Mm. You really do have to, because that can cause more risk to yourself yeah. if you don't do it in a, in a particular way. Yeah. And then I also really would encourage people to get support from professionals or from 
other support groups, LGBTI groups, mm. and also talking to parents. Please, there are groups like Triangle Project here in Cape Town. There are groups which offer parental groups to, for support to parents as well, mm. who may be struggling with the idea of their child yeah. coming up. Mm. It's kind of crazy to me in this generation, this time, but there's a fact of that. Happen. One has to be respectful of that. And then it is living it. So when we talk about coming out, it's not just, okay, I've come out today, I've sent my letter, <laughs> and oh, I can just cruise. Yeah. As we speak about, you know, you come out every day. Yeah. Because every day you're going to be meeting people it who is. are going to be confronting you with it or are going to be, you know, really ugly about it or really yeah. just like really embracing you. So it's a daily process which heterosexist people mm. will never experience. Yeah. 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 And that is why I did it on such a big scale to try and minimize me having to do it as often, but over it's still going again. to happen. Because yeah, yeah. I did, I came out about two years ago to my family and friends, but because I hadn't fully accepted myself, yeah. I slowly but surely started going yeah. back in the closet. You meet new people and you don't bring it up then. Oh, yeah. okay. And you go to okay. a family event and there's an aunt that she's asking, oh, like, why it's no girlfriend? girlfriend? And right. yeah, you don't say. You deny. You did, yeah, and right. slowly yeah. but surely, you find mm. yourself back in the closet again. So it's quite mm. a process. Well, it give is. us a call, 021-430-9881. Yeah. We want to hear from you. Are you a parent who has had a child come out to mm. you? Or are you looking to come out and you want to get some guidance from Dr. Eve and Craig Lucas who are joining us in studio here? And again, you can call in and be anonymous this there's morning. A, there's a question I want to ask Dr. Eve, and maybe you can also give us your, your perspective, Craig, about what is the biggest fear from the family's perspective when it comes to accepting a child mm. coming out? Because it seems like you know, th the biggest pressure is first, let's say, coming out to your family, because they, they're like your yes. support-based yeah. structure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What is it that parents are fearful of, oh. that they wouldn't be open? Like you were saying, your mom said, she doesn't care what the world thinks. She just wants to protect you from the world, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? She loves you, who, yeah. with who, but parents that struggle with that, mm. what, so what the are they fearing? The first thing that parents gain to think, first of all, is what did I do wrong yes. to raise a child who's so different, who's gay? Yeah. And then there's something biologically wrong, which means that there's a biological illness in our family. Mm. So there's a lot of self-blame and recrimination mm. and yeah. shame that the parent has to go through first. And then there is, and I have a lot of empathy for parents, <clears throat> A crushing of dreams. I have this vision of this boy and he's going to get married and he's going to live this life. Or else there is a scene of him differently. Yeah. And suddenly I've got to you know, kind of recalibrate my brain. Rewire your mind. Yes, yeah. to see him a little differently to what society has said is normal. Yeah. Um, and then there is the community thing of what are other people going to think, what yeah. are other people going to say. And overall, I would hope for parents that there is going to be this is my child and I love this child irrespective mm. of and knowing that he's going to have a layer of difficulty in life because yeah. there isn't the full acceptance or yeah. understanding or ignorance that exists in society. Yeah. Yeah. Craig, how did you feel immediately after coming out and would you say that this entire process that you've gone through has enriched you and strengthened you as a person? Yeah, it's, it's strange because I felt so oddly normal but I also hadn't felt normal in a really long exactly. time. And so I expected this massive change. And I, was, <laughs> I posted the letter and I sat there and I was like, I feel so normal. But that was the best thing for me. And yeah. I could mm. think again, I could think straight without like, having to think about what I'm thinking. You could think straight. Yeah, and I, it's actually, it's like a little embarrassing, but I remember I woke up the next morning, I was literally dancing around the kitchen to Taylor oh. Swift, like shake it off. And I did, I, I caught shake myself it doing it. Yeah. Just shake what it off. am I doing? <laughs> So it was liberating. Oh, oh man. Yeah. So liberating. Cool. Shake it off. Yeah. <laughs> I love the choice. I love it. I just oh, also wow. want to add in another element, if I can, of when I was reading your letter and how you said you'd come out, and then I don't know who it was who said to you, um, you shouldn't be doing that because yeah. your target group is young girls. Yeah. And we need young girls to buy your records yeah. and young girls who are going to kind of be adoring you. And then you step back into yeah. the closet. And that kind of disturbed me a whole lot. I don't know what that did for you. Um, so it was easy for me to believe those kinds of things because I thought there was something wrong with me. So I sort of latched oh, okay. on to what everybody said. Mm. If somebody yeah. told me, maybe don't do it, people might say bad things. I was like, okay, cool, that's why I won't come out. Not, mm. I won't come out because if I come out, then it's real. Mm. So it was more yeah. me. Yeah. Just still having technology to, yeah, to yourself. Yeah, and because, I mean, things have changed, Craig, absolutely. and young girls just, you know, love yeah. people. Yeah. And especially the younger generation who are your so, fans. So many fans said, like, they were even almost offended that I would think that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's so far from the truth.
I want to quickly just, just mm. maybe before we close off, just talk about the fact that you are dealing with a very real situation yep. where one of your very close people in your life who used to be somebody who's very dependable mm. yep. is treating you very differently yep. as a result of you coming out. What would you say to somebody out there who's watching, mm. who's just had a child that's come out and is now treating them differently? What would you like to say to them about what they are doing consequently mm. to question. that child? Mm. Yeah, I, I think it's the most damaging if it comes from people close to you. Exactly. And like, if you really love somebody, there's no reason for, for you to treat them like that. I, I think that they don't understand the hurt that they're causing. Mm. Mm. So I think just be more cognizant, like sit down, ask yourself if it's worth treating this person like that. If you do, then I don't think you really love them in the first mm. place, you know? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Wow. Well, thank you very much for, for being here. Unfortunately, mm, we've run out of time. That. And, yeah, sharing your story. Yeah. As I said, I think you've liberated and untrained so many more people mm. out there. And Dr. Eve, also thank you very much for your expertise. We hope that that has been an enlightening conversation mm. uh, on this Monday morning for you. Catch up with Dr. Eve on social media at yes. dr underscore Eve. And she's also wild on that gram. Yes. <laughs> you <see my> boomerang. <laughs> your post boomerang. Your boomerang. <laughs> and of course, boomerang you can follow, yes. follow Craig as well <laughs> at Craigie Cracks uh, on Twitter. Uh, that's, mm. Thanks very much for the conversation, guys. Thank you, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>